Welcome everybody to video two of, I honestly don't know how many videos I'm going to have to make of this subject, discussing acid-base equilibrium. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys about conjugate acids and conjugate bases, what they are, how to identify them. I'm going to teach you about Ka, the acid-base equilibrium constant. I'm also going to teach you how to determine, relatively speaking, how strong or weak one acid is versus another by examining its conjugate base and vice versa. I'm also going to teach you how to determine how strong a base is by looking at its conjugate acid. And then I'll teach you how to determine in an acid-base equilibrium reaction which side is going to be favored. That's the lineup for today. Let's get started. So at this point, I have to teach you some vocabulary that is absolutely essential. For every single acid-base equilibrium reaction, such as this one, which we discussed in our earlier video, the reactant that loses an H+, in this case HCl, is called the acid. The reactant that accepts the H+, which is H2O in this case, is called the base. The product that arises from the acid, which would be chloride in this case, is called the acid's conjugate base. And the product that arises from the base, which is H3O plus, or hydronium in this case, is called the base's conjugate acid. Confused? Let me clarify. For this reaction specifically, once again, we have to look at the left side of the equation and identify one of those two things as the acid and the other as the base. The thing that gives up a hydrogen as you move from the left to the right is the acid. That is going to be HCl. The thing that accepts that hydrogen on the left side of the equation is going to be the base, in this case, water. Now, as this H is removed from HCl, what's left over? The thing that's left over is chloride, Cl minus. Chloride, then, is the thing that comes from the acid, the thing that's produced or birthed from the acid. That thing, chloride, is that acid's conjugate base. As we look on the right side of the equation, the thing that emerged from our base, water, is hydronium. That is the product that forms when the base accepts a proton. That thing, the hydronium, is called this base's conjugate acid. I hope that makes sense. Let's take a look at some other examples. In this example, we have nitrous acid reacting with water. What we do is we look at the left-hand side of the equation and identify the acid and the base. The acid is the thing that gives up a hydrogen as it moves over to the product side of the equation. In this case, that's definitely the nitrous acid. Nitrous acid gives up a hydrogen and transfers it to this water to become NO2 minus. The thing that gives up the hydrogen on the left side of the equation is the acid, and the thing that accepts it is the base. We now look at the right-hand side. The acid turns into nitrogen dioxide. This nitrogen dioxide, then, is that acid's conjugate base. The water, after accepting the hydrogen, turns into hydronium H3O+, which is that water's conjugate acid. Now, water doesn't always behave as a base. It depends on the situation. Looking at this one, for example, we can see something different. I look at the left side of the equation and try to identify which thing is giving up a hydrogen, which one is accepting a hydrogen. As we go from left to right, you'll notice that the water is actually giving a hydrogen to this NH3 to become hydroxide OH minus. Because the water in this case is the thing giving up a hydrogen, it becomes the acid. The thing accepting the hydrogen is the NH3. It accepts the hydrogen to become NH4 plus ammonium. NH3, ammonia then, is the base. Ammonium is its conjugate acid. So to sum this idea up, to figure out what an acid is in an acid-base equilibrium reaction, just ask yourself, which reactant lost a proton. Whichever one did, that's the acid. To figure out which one is the base, ask yourself, which reactant received the proton? That's the base. Now, figuring out which thing is the conjugate base is also simple. It's the product that looks exactly like the acid, but with a minus charge replacing the hydrogen. The conjugate acid is the thing that looks exactly like the base, except with a hydrogen and a plus charge added to it. So to make a conjugate base, just remove a hydrogen from and then add a negative charge to your acid. To make a conjugate acid from a base, just add a hydrogen and a plus charge to your base. Make sense? All right, we'll see. Here are some examples. If I've got this molecule right here, acetic acid, can you draw the conjugate base? Well, as I just explained, all you have to do to draw a conjugate base is take the acidic hydrogen, in this case, this hydrogen right here, remove it and replace it with a negative charge. The conjugate base of acetic acid then is acetate. How about this one? Hydrochloric acid. How do I make its conjugate base? Once again, I remove the hydrogen and replace it with a negative charge. So chloride 
is the conjugate base of hydrochloric acid. Now this one, sulfuric acid. What is its conjugate base? All I do is take a hydrogen, in this case one of the acidic hydrogens, this one right here, remove it and replace it with a minus charge. So hydrogen sulfate is the conjugate base of sulfuric acid. Make sense? All right, let's take a look at some examples. What are the conjugate bases of each of the species shown here? Separately, what are the conjugate acids of each of the species shown here? Now I'm not going to answer either of these for you, but we'll let you attempt them on your own. Keep in mind that when you're trying to draw a conjugate acid, however, you just go in reverse. You replace a negative charge with a hydrogen. And if you have something like H2O that doesn't have a negative charge, you just take a hydrogen, add it to H2O so that it becomes H3O, and then add a plus charge. So every time I become more acidic, I add a plus. Every time I become more basic, I add a minus. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll let you do it on your own. Now we turn to a different subject, that of Ka, the acid-base equilibrium constant. Now acid-base reactions are also, almost always, equilibrium reactions. Just like Kc that we talked about in our previous chapter, to which I'll link here, there is a Kc for acid-base reactions. However, we call it Ka for some reason, probably just to make it more confusing. Thus, for any generic acid-base reaction like this one, the acid dissociation constant, or Ka, is this. Please note that water doesn't appear in the Ka expression because it's a liquid. We also would omit solids, as I've talked about in an earlier video. Also, as I talked about in our previous video, H3O plus hydronium is sometimes just abbreviated as H plus. That takes us then to a problem. What are the chemical equation and Ka expression for the ionization of HBrO2 in aqueous solution? I invite you to try this multiple choice question on your own. If you like, I'll post a link here to a separate video in which I do it on the board. We now move to a different subject. How strong is a specific acid anyway? To understand this, here are a few things that you definitely should remember. First, the more an acid dissociates to make H+, the more acidic it is. Strong acids then dissociate almost completely to form heavy concentrations of H+. Second, as you can guess from the previous slide, the larger the Ka value, the greater the H plus concentration an acid makes. In other words, the larger the Ka value, the stronger the acid. That takes us to a problem then. Of all the acids shown in this table, which one is the strongest? I'm not going to do this for you, but we'll counsel you to remember what I just said. Whichever one has the largest Ka value, that will be the strongest acid. Okay, now there's one more awesomely awesome piece of information that you should definitely remember. And when I put five exclamation points next to definitely, I really mean that. The stronger the acid, the weaker its conjugate base. And the weaker the acid, the stronger its conjugate base. I'll let you pause that and digest it a little bit if you need to. You have to remember this. It's crucially important. Thus, if we're given an acid's Ka, we can predict the relative strength of its conjugate base. The larger an acid's Ka, the stronger that acid is, and hence, the weaker that conjugate base will be. The smaller an acid's Ka, the weaker that acid is, and the stronger its conjugate base will be. Got it? Let's take a look at a problem then. Using the data in this table, which of the conjugate bases shown here is the strongest base? Let me talk you through this one. What we have here are these individual conjugate bases, and they are the conjugate bases of the various molecules shown here. It's asking us which of these conjugate bases is the strongest base. Please keep in mind, then, that the strongest conjugate base will be the one whose acid is the weakest because they're inversely related. The stronger the conjugate base, the weaker the acid, and vice versa. So we're looking for whichever these acids is the weakest the conjugate base that arises from that acid will in turn be the strongest conjugate base. How do we determine which of these acids is the weakest? Well, that's going to be the one with the smallest Ka value. Which of these numbers is the smallest Ka value? Yeah, it's going to be this one, HOAC, or acetic acid. Hence, the strongest base is going to be its conjugate base, acetate. Here's another problem. Which of the conjugate bases shown here is the weakest base? Now, I'm not going to do this one for you, but we'll give you a little bit of advice. Remember that the weakest base down here is going to come from the strongest acid over here. So what we have to do is determine which of these acids is the strongest. The conjugate base that arises from it will be the weakest. How do we determine which acid is the strongest? That's going to be the one with the largest Ka. I'll let you figure that out on your own. Now to a different subject. Which side is favored in an acid-base equilibrium reaction? 
Sometimes, you see, we have to figure out which side, reactants or products, is favored in an acid-base equilibrium reaction. How do we do this? Here's how. First, you need to understand that equilibrium will always go toward the less reactive or less acidic side. Hence, the side that has the acid that's more acidic, the one with the larger Ka, will not be the favored side. It follows then that the side with the weaker acid, which is the smaller Ka value, will be the side that is favored. Hopefully that makes sense. Once again, in any equilibrium reaction, the equilibrium is going to drift toward and favor whichever side is the less reactive, the more stable and boring side. When you're talking about acid-base equilibrium, that's going to be the side that has the weaker acid. So all we have to do is use Ka's to figure out what that is. Let's take a look then at this problem. I want you to predict the products of the acid-base reaction shown here, and then predict whether the equilibrium lies to the left or the right of the equation. Now please note, in order to do this problem, you'll need the table that I'm going to show you momentarily. So please pause this, take note of it, and then I will show you this table. Here is the table. And now go back to the problem. I invite you to do this on your own, and then if you like, you can click the link here to a separate video in which I'll show you how to do it on the board. That takes us to the end of this video. Please stay tuned to the next one in which I'll talk about the acid-base properties of water as well as some other exciting and juicy stuff. Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.